Good evening, everyone. I'll call this Board of Alder meeting to order. If you please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Clerk, can I have a roll call, please? <coughs> Alderman Bowman? Present. Alderman Bachelman? Present. Alderman Reese? Present. Alderman Milner? Present. Alderman Dickerson? Here. Alderman Long? Here. Alderman Turner? Here. Alderman Levison? Here. Mayor Hassock? Here. And we do have a quorum. Welcome, everyone. Um, we do not have any ceremonial matters tonight, but I would like to welcome Mr. Dan Fowler with us tonight. He's filling in for John Fairfield. So welcome, and we appreciate you uh, being available. Thank you very much. Glad to, glad to be here. All right. Um, with no ceremonial matters, uh, we'll move on to public participation. I'll open the floor at this time. Anybody who has anything to bring before this board that is not on our already scheduled agenda, please step forward at this time. Seeing no one, I will close the public participation. We'll move on to approval of minutes. Uh, first, we have the Board of Aldermen meeting from March 19th. Make a motion to approve. Second. 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 Motion from Alderman Dickerson and a second from Alderman Reese. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes are approved. Uh, next we have the minutes from the March 19th executive session. Make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion from Alderman Dickerson and a second from Alderman Levison. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And minutes are approved. Moving on to our agenda items. Uh, first tonight we have Council Bill 25. An ordinance to amend the Code of Ordinances of the City of Harrisonville, Section 700.480, Sewer Service Rates to Finance Mandated State Improvements and Maintain the Sewer System, basing all sewer bills on the actual <coughs> consumption of water, establishing a minimum user fee, and establishing an effective date. Good evening, Mayor and Board. Um, obviously, we've talked about this. This is what we just had our public hearing on. I'd be more than happy to answer any other questions. I think there is one item that needs to be changed in here. At least my copy says that it's supposed to take effect in May 1. I think we're looking at July 1 instead. Correct? It's in there properly. Oh. It, it is in there right. July. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, well, since we, uh, in case somebody doesn't watch the video from the public hearing, just want to reiterate this was a an adjustment we're making per DNR's recommendation right. to show that our sewer rates can support our actual sewer. Right. This will be our first step. And this really, it's not changing the actual dollar figures in the uh, ordinance. Mm -hmm. All it's doing is changing the way we collect it. Um, and we'll start collecting from residential the same way we collect from retail and, and commercial and all those. So this is a change in methodology. It's correct? a change in methodology. Okay. All right. Now we do. We did mention during the public hearing that we do have some future um, enhancements that we will be required to make. We do uh, DNR on our last permit. Generally, we get a permit in a five-year cycle. Our last permit was in a three-year cycle instead, um, and they do that because one of the things they put on there is they want us to have UV or some other form of disinfection protection at both of our sewer plants. Um, and it's going to roughly be somewhere in the neighborhood of, depends on, I've never paid an engineer at this point to have an exact laid out, but their best guess is about one and a half or so for the main plant, and about one for the small plant. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, and at the end of the day, this will be just a small step in what we need. Okay. All right. Any questions? Yes, I have a question. Um, for the recording, would you please um, respond to how this will affect level five? Uh, it shouldn't really affect level five. Correct, Mark? Can you help me with that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, the level pay calculations went out, and so we will maintain those for this next year. However, we will monitor them and, and notify those customers that if they have any changes in their, what I call a catch-up, you know, that would be due next um, February. So, that, and also to watch your own bills to see because it gives you that total 
on each of your utility bills on which where you're at, whether you've got money due to you because you've you know overpaid or you've got money that's going to be due to the city in that process. We did talk about that. We didn't think it would affect them because they're calculated for the next 12 months. However, it will affect your catch up, you know, in, in February. So you're better off watching that throughout the year. And we call that the excess shortage. I think is how it's labeled on your bill. <laughs> yes. I believe that's how it's labeled. And, and it, it really will just depend on your, I mean, we looked at our bills and, and it, it all depends on how much water you use in a given month. I mean, your average is set, you know, if you had a high water usage when your average was set, it's possible that this could be less money. I mean, it, it's hard to say over a year's time what it will really, you know, affect because it just, it's based on the actual usage. Right. I would assume if everybody's water usage, usage stays the same, they will have a little larger catch up amount. Which they can pay that any time, too. If right. you, I mean, if that's something you're worried about, that's something you do have the ability to, to pay down um, so you don't have a large bill. So I know some people, if it gets up above a certain amount, they go ahead and pay it down just because they want to. And, of course, then if they get an excess, then no harm done. Right. <clears throat> so, okay. And I believe you also said that we were one of very few cities that works on an average basis right. that most everybody else works on a consumption basis. Correct. Right. 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 Any other questions, comments? All right. Thank you, sir. Well, this is an ordinance, um, so I would uh, entertain a motion to suspend the ruling of Council Bill 25 to a second reading. I make that motion. Second. I have a motion from Alderman Dickerson and a second from Alderman Turner. Any further discussion? I'll need a roll call, please. Alderman Long? Yay. Yeah. Alderman Bowman? Aye. Alderman Milner? Aye. Alderman Dickerson? Aye. Alderman Reese? Aye. Alderman Turner? Aye. Alderman Bachelet? Aye. Alderman Levison? Aye. All right, second reading Council Bill 25, please. An ordinance to amend the Code of Ordinances of the City of Harrisonville, Section 700.480, sewer service rates to finance mandated state improvements and maintain the sewer system, basing all sewer bills on the actual consumption of water, establishing a minimum user fee, and establishing an effective date. All right, roll call again, please. Alderman Long? Aye. Alderman Turner? Aye. Alderman Dickerson? Aye. Alderman Davison? Aye. Alderman Bowman? Aye. Alderman Bockelman? Aye. Alderman Reese? Aye. And Alderman Milner? Aye. Aye. All right, and Council Bill 2-5 will become Ordinance 0-3433. Uh, just that, my first one, huh? when I said yay, there's a, it was an eye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, you just want to clarify, huh? All right. Yay, nay sounds too much. I was mean. Yes. I, whatever. I'm out of practice. That's all right. We'll let it slide. All right. Uh, Council Bill 26. An ordinance repealing certain sections of Section 205, Article 5, Fireworks of the Harrisonville. Code of Ordinances, enacting in lieu thereof, revisions to section 205.210, 205.220, and 205.240, and establishing an effective date. You want this? Yeah. Okay. Public Safety Committee discussed allowing bomber rockets to be sold inside city limits because our retailers can't sell them. We can't shoot them. <coughs> and, uh, the committee said, we're going to keep that. You're not going to be able to shoot them, but... Uh, it was a disadvantage for the local sellers because they can't sell bottle rockets. So you can just drive right out of town and pick them up. Uh, so while we were discussing that, uh, the mayor and I had also talked about uh, clarifying the times to be able to shoot fireworks and thought it would be better to kind of lay it out uh, as we've got it included in the ordinance here. So on July 1st and 2nd, you can shoot them from 7 to 10. And July 3rd and 4th, you can shoot them from 7 to midnight because a lot of people... Um, stay up late and are off on the 4th, but not off on the 5th. So staying up late on the 4th is not as easy. <clears throat> so that was just one of the items that the, uh, the committee thought that was important to clarify that and include that as a, as a change to put in this ordinance. So you've got a couple of items. Yeah, we had originally discussed, um, uh, Mr. Welch and I had talked about changing it to where if the 1st through the 3rd fell on a... a Friday or Saturday, you could shoot till midnight. 
Um, but then after talking to the Chief, he, he made a good point that would be difficult, more difficult for people to understand, you know, it's going to change as the when those hit the weekend. Um, and so then the suggestion was it would be more consistent if you had, you know, two days at one time and then two days at another. Um, and what this does is, you know, in the event of bad weather or there's a lot of people that like to go watch the park display that maybe don't come back and, again, don't shoot their fireworks afterwards, um, it gives more than one day for somebody to do a show. I mean, around here it doesn't get dark till after 9 o'clock, um, so you have usually till from 9 to 10 to shoot, and if you have uh, a very big uh, assortment, it will take you longer than an hour to shoot, so this will kind of give people the opportunity maybe to uh, get their fireworks shot off. Um, the other part of this was, uh, you know, I had I've been asked by by several of the vendors this last year about why you know, they understood completely why you can't shoot bottle rockets in the city limits. Um, however, they, you know, we do have the highway. We do get a lot of lake traffic. Um, there's a lot of people that travel to the lake that buy fireworks. Um, it's a lot of times they will stop uh, in Harrisonville on their way. Uh, however, you can drive one mile south, and a lot of people get off at the seven highway exit to go to the lake, because if you're going to any of the, the main lakes, you're going to get off at that exit, and you can go in there, and they, they, the, the vibe I got is that people don't like to make more than one stop. They want to stop at one spot and get it all. Um, so if, you're, if you were just talking about simply the number of bottle rockets that got sold, it wouldn't be a very big dollar figure on sales tax. However, if you think about the amount of fireworks somebody would buy in total if they make that their one stop, there's where you're capturing more of your sales tax dollars. Um, you know, there's other things that are sold in city limits that aren't allowed to be uh, used. Firearms is a good example. You can buy guns and you can buy ammunition in the city limits, but you can't discharge them in the city limits. And I think it's, it's a very similar uh, premise. And I think you also, the people that, are, if anybody's going to violate the ordinance of shooting a bottle rocket, they're going to do it anyway. They're going to go south of town one mile, they're going to buy them, and they're going to shoot them off. So I don't think you're going to see a huge uptick in, in people shooting bottle rockets. I think it's just simply allowing the vendors to sell them and us to capture some additional sales tax. So that's how this came about. Um, entertain any questions or comment at this time. Alderman Leveson, you look like you're I do have something to say. Day. Yeah, um, I would propose that maybe we would have a requirement for those fireworks stands that um, they have a thing posted. Absolutely. That, that they're not to be shot within city limits. Um, and I also would like to know if we have a plan of action to handle those that are shooting them off um, as far as the police go. I mean, because I think we've just got the temptation going on there. One, they need to know when they go and purchase them, hey, just because they're being sold here does not mean you can do that. And two, do we have some repercussions if we call in and say, hey, our neighbor is shooting off, you know, these bottle rockets and they're hitting my roof. Yeah, so. the, uh, I think we do the same thing with the, I think Sutherland sells the baby chickens. Mm -hmm. And there's a sign down there that says city ordinance, what our ordinance is about having chickens, you have to one, you can have a permit, and two, you can only have so many. Um, and that was one of the things, yeah, that I wanted to see is that we have some type of sign. So again, it goes back to the person that is going to follow the rules is going to see that and say, okay, you know, little Johnny, we're not going to buy these because we can't shoot them off the town. Or, oh, we live out in the country, that's not an issue. Um, as far as, um, I don't know, I mean, I assume there's a fine now if you get, if somebody got caught with them, it's just, Again, it would be the challenge would be catching somebody in the act of. Well, that's not too hard to catch them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't hide it very well. Yeah. Um, what we usually do if we get called with a complaint that they're violating the ordinance, we'll go out, we'll warn them usually the first time, second time we'll either uh, write them a ticket or maybe even take their fireworks. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to have to disagree on this one because I think this is just a temptation that you're putting in front of somebody to say, here, buy these, buy these, buy these, we want your tax money, but oh, wait, you can't sell, you can't fire them off here. I think that's just kind of, I, I think that's bad on our part, plus why give them the opportunity to even have them? If they want to drive a mile and go get them, go get them. But you're still going to get in trouble if you shoot them here. I think it's just, I, I think it's setting us up to make the police have, a hundred more calls than what they need to have, and 
have to try and enforce something and they say, well, we bought them here, why would you sell them if you can't shoot them off? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a good idea. I think I, I, I would definitely vote no on this. I think this is just, I mean, if, if we can't do it in town, there's no, no reason to even bother selling them. That's my opinion. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah, I, I tend to agree with Alderman Miller and Alderman Levinson on, on different <laughs> different pieces of, mm -hmm. uh, of our little speech here, but, but I think it just simply sends a mixed message, mm -hmm. especially to kids, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a lot of kids that are buying these things. It's, it's a lot of times not, not grown-up people, it's kids. And I do think it sends a mixed message, and I think if we're going to sell them, we need to let them shoot them off. And if we're not going to let them shoot them off, we'll take them to sell them. Yeah. So, any other comments, questions? It's important to be consistent. Yeah. My, well, deal, well, I'm well, my deal is, is you know, you can shoot off a gigantic rocket that stands this tall, and my kids have shot them, and you light them, and we take off running because you never know where they're going to go. And I mean, I'm telling you, you do you do not know where they're going to go. And I mean, there's rockets this big, and then they're sold right here in town. And then the artillery shells, I mean, there's a lot more harmful, dangerous, more, way more than a bottle rocket that's being sold and shot in the city limits. And would you agree with that, Chief? I mean... <laughs> you, you you know what I'm talking about. I mean, there I mean, are bigger artillery. I mean, let's say let's let's prime example of parachute. My kid back years ago, he loved parachutes. Okay, well, he liked the ones at night. Well, guess what? They're on fire when they're coming down. So, and they don't. I mean, they go above the trees. They go above the houses, and when they come down, we try and find them but we can't always find them. Like those big missiles that I'm talking about, I mean, I had one, and I'll just be honest with you, it went inside David's house, and went towards Independence Street, and went right straight up in front of the house, and I was like, told the kids we were done, and that was a legal fire, I mean, just a rocket. I mean, I would have much rather had someone shooting a bottle rocket than those big things. So, I mean, I, I don't see a problem. I, I mean, like I said, if, if, they don't, if they don't want them shot in Harrisonville, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that, but there's way more dangerous stuff being shot. Trust me. I mean, if you have kids or grandkids or whatever and go to any of these places and see what some of these people are buying, what they're selling. But I mean, they're not illegal to <laughs> shoot in town. I that. That's right. the difference. But These that, are illegal to shoot in town. Right. But so then maybe we should, are you suggesting then maybe we just don't sell those either? Well, I'm saying that, well, just like Mrs. Reese said. I mean, but they can buy those in town and shoot those in town. Bottle okay. rockets, they can't do either at this point. <laughs> <clears throat> right. So, I mean, I, I, mean, I don't, I guess my whole point is, is, is there's way more dangerous stuff being shot than a bottle rocket. So I don't have a problem with it, and I'm kind of like Brian said, or Mr. Mayor, sorry. Um, you know, it's kind of like the guy that's driving down the road with the speed limit that says 70. If he's going to go 80, he's going to go 80, whether it says 70 or 65 or whatever. If he's going to speed, he's going to speed. If he's going to buy bottle rockets, he's going to go out of town and he's going to buy them a mile down the road and he's going to come back in town and he's going to shoot them off. I did it when I was a kid. I mean, I won't deny it. There probably ain't too many people sitting here that, had, that didn't do it. But my whole point is, is that there's a lot more dangerous stuff being shot today than a bottle rocket. So would you okay. suggest then that, that we go ahead and let them shoot these bottle rockets here in town? I why did we? Why did, does anybody know why we stopped letting them shoot bottle rockets? Wasn't it the wooden roofs? That was a, uh, a long, long before my time. Yeah, I think it, yeah. it's it's been the it's that been was that way for a, long time. It, a lot of cities went to it because I mean there's there's several things. One, it's the 
It used to be the wood roofs, which obviously are not the issue that they used to be. I mean, they're not going to be the wood roofs. Um, but two, was, it was, you know, with bottle rockets, when you shoot a lot of bottle rockets, the stick goes somewhere. It's not like a, you know, and it's that way with, with sky rockets, as you mentioned. Right. There's there's it's trash a, associated with it. Plastic. Uh, um, and I think that's, that was another part of it. Um, but I still believe that the argument that it's going to create more shooting is a subjective argument. You can't prove that. Um, my, my feeling on this is they've been illegal for this long. It's, it was legal at one time because I remember buying them, shooting them when I was a kid. At one time it was legal. It was made illegal for a reason. So if it was, again, we're not asking to make it legal to shoot them. We're saying make it legal to sell them. If we see a huge uptick in the shooting of bottle rockets and issues with them, it's not like the board can't come back and change things. It's not, this isn't a, oh, you can't, you know, this is a forever thing. It's something, you know, I just still think that we talk about all the time how we live along I-49 highway and the whole we can cash in on being on an interstate. We are, between that and 291, you have a huge flow of traffic to the lake. And I'm telling you, you go to the lake, every fireworks stand down there sells them. And so people do not want to make more than one stop because what happens when you make another stop? You find something else that you want and you spend more money. So they'd rather make that one stop, spend the money one time, and I think that, that we're missing out on potential <coughs> sales. And, you know, I, I, I think it's worth the gamble to see what happens. But I also think they can shoot them if they like to. They can't shoot them. Well, absolutely. And that's the thing. And I think Judy made a very just, valid point. It's, it's confusing to people. How is it confusing when there's a sign right there in ordinance that that's, says you That's can, why I feel that there needs them. to be a sign. But we yeah. have enough rural people around here that they do live out in the country. And, you know. And they can and, but right out there. I don't think that it's asking too much for them to be responsible. And if you want to make an age limit and say, you know, you have to be 18 to buy these. That's something that you could discuss too. But I just I, I don't see an issue with it as long as it's made clear. You're just asking people to be responsible. Posting it, you know. I mean, we can post that you're not supposed to drink if you're 21. If you're not 21, and if someone wants to go give someone some alcohol, we can't really stop that. But we're we're saying this is the rule. This no, is the, the way alcohol it is. thing, it would be like if you let the kid buy it and told him not to drink it. No, it's not so. the same thing. It's not the same thing. <laughs> he doesn't like it. No. You, the rules are very clearly stated. There's nothing muddled there. Is it legal for us to pick one thing out of a display of fireworks and tell them they can't sell it on the city basis? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is very common. I could. Mr. Mayor, for these ordinances to, to specify what can and cannot be sold mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in a fireworks ordinance. So it's not to be certainly lawful to do. Okay, some some places I think restrict. You, you can only have like non uh, flammable, like the, the poppers and that kind of I mean, I guess like yeah, the, you know, uh, some of the party popper stuff, they allow that, but they don't allow. Would we have to change this, the language in this, if we allow them to sell it? But like uh, Jessica said about having a sign that says they can't, uh, yes. is that, do we have to change this? Probably. To have the sign portion. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'll be honest. I, I thought I, we said in committee that we were going to. Well, the other thing I like is, is a suggestion made is an age so, issue. I think that's a good idea that wasn't discussed in committee is if you had an age, you know, just yeah, 18 or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just saying that, you know, we could do, the, I think I agree with her about the sign. If we're going to let them sell them, sell them, shoot them. then there's a sign saying they just like you said about the chickens, they can't have them, so they can't farm them too much. That still allows the people to sell them, but they know they can't shoot them in personal city limits. So that would have to be if that was if this was a move forward and they wanted to have a sign to be part of this ordinance to vote on, would that be, could that be done in an amendment or does it need to be done? I can do it right here. We could just do, they could yes. amend it to make the motion to put it forward if somebody wanted to put it forward. Yes. So we already have a sign required at the locations because of time. So you're just adding extra language to that sign. So does that need to be part of the... I would just change 205210 mm -hmm. put the additional language on there where right. bottle rockets may not be discharged in city limits. To make that part of the, the reading here? Yep. Okay. All right. So okay. what do we do? So would you, okay, what I'm asking is if, if somebody, if, 
If you would want to change what would be read to be voted on by the body, if somebody wants to make the motion to move this forward, you would have to amend it to add that additional language. Mr. Alderman Turner, did you have a comment? Yeah. All right. I have a question Chief. Uh, Chief, do you have a, what's your stance on if we allow them to sell and shoot? Are the ball rackets any more dangerous than anything else? Well, I don't know done? originally why it was ever put in there. I asked when I came here, um, and I was told that it's because it lands on rust and could, could start fires. They don't, they don't shoot as shoot as high, high. Yeah. as the other artillery. Um, uh, I can't say as I have a, a preference either way. I would be concerned about an age limit though, um, and I think you've kind of went away from that. But if you're going to make it so that they can't purchase them until they're 18, it kind of falls in. Can they possess them before 18 as well? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you are wanting to make a motion to move council bill. Well, first you'd have to. You're going to have to make a motion to suspend the motion and move it to a second reading. However, you want it amended to include the language for a sign to be displayed that city ordinance does not allow the discharge of bottle rockets in the city limits. Is that I make a motion of what you said. Okay. <laughs> so that's the motion. He's, made, he's made a motion made to motion move Council Bill 26 to a second reading, amended to have the language written in there for a sign that would say the discharge of bottle rockets is is not legal. I would say bottle rockets may not be discharged in city limits. Right, but you're putting a no, sign. Yeah. You're, you're, you're saying that you can, or shall not be. Within. Within. So that's it. Within. Okay, I have a motion. Way to work, that David. Good job. <laughs> let, let me uh, let me work on the language real quick. Okay. okay. Just give me a couple let seconds. Let okay. <laughs> Well, why don't we have a brief moment while he's doing that. Uh, Chief, can you introduce our new lieutenant to the board? Sure. Thank you. Yes. I told him we'd be doing this right off the bat. He came in special. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't told when to do it. I just mentioned um, to me. So. Sean Murray was promoted and began the lieutenant's position on April, no, March 26th, uh, last Monday. So he's been doing it a week. He took over for Lieutenant Terman, who resigned and uh, moved on. We're happy Sean uh, began his career here. Uh, basically, I think he spent some time as a park ranger and then uh, moved up through the ranks to sergeant and now lieutenant. So super excited to have him. Mm -hmm. It also creates a sergeant's position, which we're working on. Well. Mm -hmm. so, um, Sean Murray, you've been here 15 years. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Always exciting to hear what's going on at the end. That's always a, it, I think it's good for morale and everybody. And just, and, and, we know what we're getting, so. Anyway. All right. Are you good? I am good. The language adjustment, sir. I have a, a first, so now I'm just going to read the second. Second, I second that. Okay. Well, let me read the amendment so you can put that That's in the second reading. Okay, read, okay, you can read that, and then, well, what, we'll have, actually, you'll read the second as amended. All right. What we're voting on is to, we will have a, a vote to suspend the ruling and have a second reading. If that does not pass, the second reading will occur at the next meeting. Okay. Other, if it does pass, then we'll have a second reading. You can read as amended, and then they will have a roll call vote to vote on the amended right. version of what you Well, have. for everybody, what I was pro 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 excuse me, proposing to do was to read how I have amended section 205.210 so that everybody knows what the amendment is. Okay. So uh, that would be fine, and then when it comes, it'll be as amended, and they'll know what the amendment is. So exactly. that, yeah. Okay, yes. so that works. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, as proposed, or as, as the motion states, section 205.210 would be amended to read as follows. All persons engaged in the retail sale of fireworks shall prominently display signs furnished by the city advising the general public that it is illegal to fire fireworks within the corporate limits of the city 
except between the hours of 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. on July 1st and 2nd, and between the hours of 7 a.m. and 12 a.m. on July 3rd and 4th. A such sign must also state that discharge of bottle rockets is prohibited by Harrisonville City Ordinance. So we're going to provide the signs. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Yes. I think that's a good idea because that makes them all the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I wasn't sure. I mean, that's. Yeah, uh, I mean, we're going to yeah. we'll do it. Yeah. Now, is it, as far as the sign, I, I mean, one of the things mentioned by Alderman Lewson is having the actual sign, having an actual sign right at the, if they are allowed to do this, if this was to pass. At the bottle rockets. You need to have something at the bottle rockets that says that they are not, that it, whatever it needs to reference that says bottle, I mean, they can have it on, they'll obviously have a sign that shows the, the time and date, but there needs to be something actually at the table if this was to go through. Mm -hmm is what she was suggesting, yeah. I think was her point, was that's right Clear there. Day. If you walk up and here's the bottle rockets, there's a paper right here that says. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to provide a sign for checkout, and then we're going to provide a sign for the bottle rockets, so we're going to be providing how many signs? One sign for the bottle rockets. Well, they probably... I don't know how they, I don't know how they set them up. Well, I don't know if it's a sign or if it's just a, if we have, I mean, this could be considered a sign. I mean, I don't know if that's what they. Mm -hmm. That's all I've ever seen. A piece of paper that's, that's all fairly laminated. Yeah. 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 It doesn't. Sure they have a lamination. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is that. Well, then I'm going to add such sign must also be displayed at the point of the display of bottle rock. Very good. Very good. Okay. Okay. And again, this is simply for. That's how it will be amended. Should that say within city limits, though? Yeah. The bottle rocket piece yes, will say within, within city limits. Correct. Is there anybody else you want to introduce tonight? <laughs> <laughs> well, Eric was texting me during the meeting. Would you like to tell him what you know? <laughs> I'm glad I'm not you. You're glad you're not me? Oh, him. Okay. Yeah, that was what the text said. <laughs> no, that's not what you said. <laughs> All right, so if I may, I'll go there and read the whole thing again. Sure. We're good on time, so. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Section 2. I could read like the city clerk of the city of Kansas City does. She can blur through these things so fast that she can't understand what she said. There might be a Works point great. There might be a working <laughs> reason for that. <laughs> Section 205.210. Sign required at sales locations. All persons engaged in the retail sale of fireworks shall prominently display signs furnished by the city advising the general public that it is illegal to fire fireworks within the corporate limits of the city except between the hours of 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. on July 1st and 2nd and between the hours of 7 a.m. and 12 a.m. on July 3rd and 4th. Any such sign must also state the discharge of bottle rockets is prohibited by Harrisonville City Ordinance within city limits. Said so sign must also be displayed. Oh, such sign must be displayed at checkout and at the point of bottle rocket display. Okay. Well, okay. All right. So that's how. That's the motion, and I have a second from Alderman Leveson. Now this vote will be for whether or not to have a second reading, and so. After this, if, if we vote that, then we would have a second reading, then you would actually vote on the actual order. So everybody's clear on what we're voting on. Okay. So uh, I will need a roll call vote for the uh, motion to move this to a second reading. Alderman Dickerson? Aye. Alderman Long? Aye. Alderman Turner? Aye. Alderman Bowman? Aye. Alderman Bachelman? Aye. Alderman Reese? Aye. Alderman Levison? Aye. Alderman Milner? Aye. All right, so now we will have a second reading of Council Bill 26 as amended. Council Bill 26, an ordinance repealing certain sections of Section 205, Article 5, Fireworks, 
of the Harrisonville Code of Ordinances enacting in lieu thereof revisions to sections 205.210, 205.220, and 205.240 and establish an effective date as amended. All right. I'll need a roll call again, please. Alderman Dickerson? Aye. Alderman Bowman? No. Alderman Bachman? Aye. Alderman Turner? Aye. Alderman Milner? No. Alderman Reese? No. Alderman Levison? Aye. Alderman Long? Aye. All right, and Council Bill 26 will become Ordinance 03434. Um, that concludes our agenda items tonight. Um, so we will now have Alderman Committee reports. Alderman Bowman. Um. <coughs> I want to commend city staff for spending Easter Sunday cleaning up the roads. Mm -hmm. and I think the, the weather caught us all off guard, and I know Easter Sunday was a day with family, but um, I really appreciate what they did for us, so that's off to the district department. Yeah, somebody said it was like uh, dipping dots falling from the sky. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. All in the box. Alderman Reese? Oh, past tonight. All right. Alderman Miller? I want to personally thank Rodney, and I think our superintendents did that today also. Um, we had some buses that had some issues getting to their final destinations, and they were gracious enough to take the phone calls and go out and spread some salt down so they could get up the hills and get to... It was a mess yeah. this morning, so yeah. we, were, you, we were very grateful. How did your Bright Future thing go, the last one that you Went had? really well. Okay. Went really well. They are a very um, dedicated group to help us out every month, and they, they, they are amazing. Well, we always get the update we're having it. We haven't been followed yeah. up, so we yes. need to be sure we're following up. I haven't, I, haven't seen, I haven't seen how much we made off of it, but okay. it's usually but a it, nice little check. Well, that's good. That's yeah. Good. All right, very good. Alderman Dickerson. Nothing. Alderman Long. No comment, Dave. Alderman Turner. No. Alderman Leeson. I would like to say something. Um, April is Autism Awareness Month, and I would love to see some blue light bulbs go up at some houses um, in support of not only those with autism, but those parents that um, have to deal with um, the challenges that come with it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Welch. Uh, you have an updated report at your seats. Um, just to follow up on item eight, talked about uh, 25 building permits. We did have, I didn't include it in here, so I'm double checking to make sure I understood it correctly. Uh, we've got another house that is going in out on 267th Street. It's on a 12 acre parcel. Uh, so we did have one more uh, home building permit coming in. So that was good news. Otherwise, if you have any questions, I'll take them now or we go later. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, tonight I want to uh, inform everybody, the uh, board know that on uh, May 24th, Harrisville is hosting the Missouri Municipal League Westgate meeting here. Um, we're going to be having that at Beck Event Center. Um, we're really looking forward to getting a chance to showcase one of the nice buildings in our historic area. Uh, we've been asked before about possibly doing this and it just kind of worked out. Um, really well that we were able to do this one. Um, and along with this, since we're talking about Beck event space, uh, it, was, it was last Thursday we attended, uh, or excuse me, it was the Thursday before, um, we attended the uh, Alderman Dickerson and uh, my wife joined me. We went to uh, Jefferson City. Uh, Beck event space was honored with a uh, historic preservation award. Uh, very exciting. There was only nine uh, uh, buildings that were honored with this award. And I tell you what, to see the buildings that were honored and see what kind of class that falls in was really amazing. Um, it's really neat to see what they're doing. Um, and I, I hope everyone tells their representatives to not cut any of the funding for our, our historic tax credits. Uh, that's one of the things they're always looking to chop. And if you see what they do with some of these buildings, it's really amazing. And uh, I'm a big proponent of they don't build them like they used to. And, an older building restored is better than a brand new building that's built today. It just you know, I don't care what you say, they're built better and if you fix them up they can uh, really be something special and 
the building, actually the building they held the uh, luncheon in was an old uh, power and light building. Uh, and it was really interesting to see that. And, and uh, uh, I know we have our old power and light building. It's one of those dreams I have is someday, someday, something maybe could be done with that. Hard to say. Um, I just think old buildings like that are neat. And there's always a way you can find some way to repurpose them. Uh, so hopefully uh, they continue to provide those tax credits. People continue to buy some of our historic buildings and, and uh, make them into, they have a good example to follow, that's for sure. So. Um, hope everybody is uh, staying warm. I don't know if spring is going to ever be here. I know it's officially here, but it sure doesn't feel like it. So, um, and let's see, they are now picking up yard waste every week. Now it's April. So. Oh, I want to ask you, what are the big items? How do we do big items like uh, mattresses and stuff like that? I know that uh, they said they'd pick them up. Where do we put them? By the trash can? Put them up front. Huh? Put them up front. By the trash can? By the trash can. Yeah, yeah they'll pick them up. Yep. And this Friday is the brush dump. Once a month. Yeah, yeah Friday is, is it once a month? Yeah. A specific thing once a month? Um, or is it once a week? I'm going to have to look that up. Uh, once, once a month. month. Once, once a month. month. Is it a okay. certain week? Certain once month? date? Or? I don't remember. It's in one of this call ahead of time. Like, it's supposed to call just to notify you. Oh. That you have something out there. Have we put something out on our website to kind of, we've had some questions about that, I and mean, then now that it's, again, we've got the new trash service and it's it's going, and, and I know I've had some people ask about the yard waste, and, and I mean, I knew to call, and I've, I've informed some other people, hey, just call, and they've said, yeah, it was great, I called, they came and picked it up, of course, now they'll be picking up weekly, but have we put something out? We have, but we could do, now that it's, now that it's time. Yeah, maybe something specific to that, because uh, we do get some questions about that. I mean, and I'm, I kind of have to sit there and be like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of unsure. I haven't, I haven't taken advantage of the of the large item pickup yet. Um, so can we get that clear on what we're supposed to do? Yeah, then we'll, we'll get something out. Put so, something in the box. So yeah, put something in the newsletter. And all. And if you call, they, what they want you to do is call so that they know what vehicle to bring by to pick it up. Because it won't be in your regular trash. It'll be thrown away. It'll be in a different vehicle. Okay. They probably have to use can the you get a number or whatever it is? I don't know. It's on yeah. the trash can. It's on your trash bill. Or it's on the trash can itself. Somebody else takes care of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the can itself. Yes. Oh, yeah, on the can? Yeah, okay. You know where your can is, David? <laughs> and then, right by my house. Look at the trash can. Who <laughs> would? Well, that's like a mattress house. Dylan's house. That's what yeah. right. I was wondering sure. when we can get rid of it. One, one last <laughs> item reminder our, uh, our brush drop off is this weekend. Uh, it's Friday and Saturday. Is it 8 to 5? 8, 8, 8 to 5 both days. 8 to 5 both days. So. Um, there will be mulch and compost available. Hopefully, it's not raining and nasty and all that. But uh, it's going to be wet and nasty anyway. I'm sure there's nothing. Yeah, yeah. So, but anyway, uh, make sure everybody knows. If you see anybody, let them know that that's this weekend. And uh, that's all I have tonight. I make a motion we adjourn. Second. A motion from Alderman Dickerson and a second from Alderman Long to adjourn. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Good night and thank you, everyone.